that this was a self-examination that I did mm. on myself and I felt a lump and it was very tiny, very tiny. But I, within two hours of feeling the lump, I was at a radiologist. I got my mammogram done and uh, the mammogram confirmed all my fears. I was diagnosed with uh, grade three invasive carcinoma. Mm. And then immediately I was put into for a surgery. Even mom also faced the same uh, problem in this family actually. It's a hereditary, right? So I didn't know it was hereditary. Okay. And um, I lost my mom when I was 17. And at that time, um, it was just, it just comes as a shock to anybody, right? If there is, and we didn't have any family history at all. Like both my grandmothers turned 90, my, you know, my mom's sister, everybody, everybody is, you know, fine. Mm. But my mom uh, got diagnosed. She also did a self-test at that time. So she was aware and she did that self-test and 17 years ago, I'm talking about, and she felt the lump and she, at that time, I don't think the, um, the, the science or the medical side of things were that, uh, much better than what it is today and we couldn't help and we couldn't save her we lost her in two years just I want to know more about your family my what about family the siblings oh my god father? okay you know so I'm the only daughter mm. I come from a, a very middle class uh, normal Maharashtrian family okay. okay I'm a Maharashtrian girl and um, I, my grandfather um, was an army officer, hmm. so defense background hai and you know we come from that. My dad although um, you know ventured into his own business hmm. and my mom she had her own uh, business too. She was, uh, she had two boutiques okay. which she used to handle, yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually your personal name is Poonam. Original name is Poonam. <laughs> 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 uh, you have a graduate, a commerce graduate, right? Yes, I'm a commerce graduate. The, so, in your family, there's no one in the film industry? No, not Not even like remotely anything to do with the film industry. And um, I was, uh, I am the first one. I am, uh, I was the one to take this huge plunge into the glamour world. And at a very young age, because I was only... 17 or 18 when I did my debut film um, and uh, so yeah I mean it is it's um, you know for somebody who is coming from a Marathi you know family or uh, nothing but army family and an army family and then you suddenly you know you venture into the glamour world it's uh, yeah and and that's what makes me you know think Anjali how fearless I was mm to just take this massive jump into a career which I had absolutely no clue of and uh, just go for it all by myself and do it you know it's, it's, we have those you know teenage times where we are fearless we that was your own much. decision actually of course it was my own decision and I wasn't um, I had full family support mm. when I uh, when I realized that um, uh, you know, I'm really comfortable in front of the camera and I love it and it comes very naturally to me just being in front of the camera and, you know, I used to get way too many offers. So I was like, if people are offering me so many films and so many shoots and they want me to come for like, you know, beauty pageants and things like that, there must be something that they're seeing in me. True. <laughs> you know, so I, there must be something that is coming naturally, which is, you know, where I'm not going for it, but they're just, you know, coming and offering me. So I did venture out into it and then when I signed my film, I realized, uh, okay, ye to naturally <laughs> are. I'm not, I have not gone and, you know, done any kind of uh, courses or any workshops or anything in acting, but it was and dancing and all of that. So. Of course, you have your family support. Agar koi bhi ladki, agar tall hai, to if she is so beautiful, everyone will ask the same question. Uh, film industry pe jaoge kya heroine banoge kya aap bhi waise aayi kya um, because of your height and your glamour and you are so beautiful actually i don't think it has got to do with height and glamour only okay, okay? it has got it's uh, it takes a lot more than uh, you know just looks 
okay or the physical aspect it takes a lot more a lot lot more and i trust me i um i have huge respect for um actors okay i know what it takes to especially the ones who are not industry kids okay especially the outsiders the non nepo kids <laughs> I mean, come on okay i have to give us that credit we it's it's uh, it's a big deal to even get a right kind of meeting for us okay it's a big deal for us to get that audition forget cracking that audition even to get a call for that audition we have lived half of our dream mm. you know your debut film was uh, anumanaspadam anumanaspadam yes it was fantastic super duper hit it was so how you got the opportunity <sighs> So at that time um I had done a lot of um, fashion shoots here which was uh, to do with some uh, jewelry and sari brands which are very very famous here in okay. Hyderabad. Okay. But I didn't know that they were such big brands here because I did the shoots in Mumbai and the holdings were put up here in Hyderabad. Yeah. So I used to get a lot of offers. Mm. And um, I used to constantly get calls from even you know, I have called for that. Yeah, you <laughs> had. I have called for that purpose only. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, I, but I'm talking. But it's about very that long time. back. I said two yeah. years back. Yeah. What I'm saying. Oh yeah, you've been. You should, yes, should, you have been. Yeah, <laughs> actually following me for two years since for an interview or maybe more. Yeah, yeah. I know. No, but uh, so that time it was the hoardings were put up here, and I was a known face. like a model who was you know but i didn't know that and uh, when i got these offers i just heard this whole script and i i was like nahi karna hai because i don't i don't know anything about acting i don't even know where the cameras are what am i supposed to do and i had this conversation with my dad and my dad was like see if they like you and if you think that you know it's it's going to give you a completely different exposure which you don't have how will you know whether you like it or not just give it a shot and i'm there whatever it is if you don't if you want to discontinue after that it's okay and he was like and i was like but are you going to be there with me and he was like yes i'll be there with you and he actually was there with me in a forest for almost 70 to 80 days that we shot that film oh okay yeah it was 70 to 80 days okay. that we shot that film and uh, there was no electricity forget mobile range Oh uh, they they were just mobile phones back then and there were no 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 signal nothing no electricity i stayed in a in a school in a village mm. they made a room for me and i i stayed like that okay <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. oh my god <laughs> and like three schedules we shot it in three four schedules but yeah it was crazy and now i look back and i was like my god i also got uh, over there i felt sick i got chikungunya and they wanted to admit me and i was like no 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 i have this and i had lost weight and all of that. it was crazy okay it was crazy <laughs> it was and i was experience. so scared of vamsi garu because everybody on set was very scared of him okay so everybody had told me like you know he's such a senior director and he's this and he's that and all that so i wanted to be like an it was telugu was greek and latin okay absolutely <laughs> and i just mugged up my dialogues and i had some good um, dialogue uh, team and diction and all and some of managed actually in this journey um, as a survivor who has supported by that time are you talking about my diagnosis and my okay so um you know actually the thing is I have all the support okay my family really 100% okay okay my family i have i mean i have amazing friends and family okay they they are my backbone and um i point in that direction and they are there for me okay it's like that that's nice but uh when i was um when i got to know that this is grade 3 invasive carcinoma and this is my diagnosis it's difficult okay it's it's a dark dark time that you go through and the thing is um i decided not to tell anyone in my family okay i didn't want the seniors in my family to get involved because you know there is a little bit of trauma attached to it because not little bit it's a huge trauma ah. attached to because i've lost my mom to it so i wanted to keep it away uh, till i knew what exactly where 
uh, I was, you know, medically, what was the stand? Uh, because all the reports, all those things, till you don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a very, uh, nobody should go through it. It's a very hard and very difficult time. We, we have this term in cancer patients have this term in oncology called scanxiety, not anxiety, oh. but scanxiety. Because all the scans, for the reports to come, you have to wait. And that anxiety is very, very high, right? Because it doesn't, they take time. Um, so till my first surgery, okay, which was within, within 14 days of my, I felt the lump and in 14 days I got a, um, uh, my surgery date. I did the surgery myself. Oh my God, I didn't tell anyone. I had a few friends. Yes. Okay. I had my, um, you know, my hairdresser. <laughs> okay. She was there with me. And I was like, I'm not going to tell my dad, I'm not going to tell anyone, okay, because uh, till I know the reports, until I know what the situation is, if there is any spread, if I have caught it early, this is surgery ke baad pata chalta hai because the tests are run on you, okay. And then my surgeon, I spoke to my surgeon and said that, you know, I have not told my family, so what do you think? Mm. So he said, you know, Hamza, let's wait for the reports. Okay, after the surgery and then if you require chemotherapy, then go ahead and you will have to tell your family. But if you don't, they were like, don't say anything. And I was like, okay, but that's just for my family side of things because I didn't want to involve them in, um, because you know, the thing is, I can handle, I, I've realized I can handle everything, what I can't handle is sympathy. Huh. I wasn't looking for pity. I wasn't looking for sympathy and there was no place for it. I thought that after reports, you have to keep it in your hand, you don't have to say anything outside. Do you think about it actually? As far as disclosing it to the media and everything, right? I mean, you know, yes, this thought comes to your mind that do you really want to disclose it? That thought does come to your mind, okay? Especially when you're a public figure. And what happens is with a disease like cancer, um, that C word, you know, changes a lot of things in the way the world looks at you. Yeah. Okay. People don't look at you the same way anymore. True, true. Yeah. So it all changes. And it is very difficult to put up a brave face and, you know, especially for somebody like me who is... Um, a glamorous actress exactly you know and has and to survive in the industry it's it's about my looks my body my um you know energy levels in dancing and performing and all of that and the glam factor and the hair and everything you know so for somebody like me um it is it would have been maybe would have been easier to hide okay and but I don't know, as I, as I kind of came to terms with this, when my diagnosis happened, my first surgery happened, and then I started my chemotherapy, I started reading up about this disease. I, even though my mother had gone through it, I had no uh, knowledge of it to that extent, okay? 